if you're a high performer, you tend to just look forward and you just go, 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 go. And you forget to look back and say, I did that. I did that. I did that for better or for worse. Some of the things you did, you might not be proud of. Some of the things you did, you might be very proud of. So I think that that's a really important question you can ask yourself. Welcome to Champions Mojo Weekly Podcast, where your hosts Kelly Palace and Maria Parker share with you what it takes to be a champion. Kelly is a former Division I head swim coach, Olympic trials qualifier, and holds Masters World and National Swimming Records, and Maria holds world records in endurance cycling, and was the overall women's winner of the world's toughest bike race, Race Across America. They'll be sharing their personal stories and wisdom along with interviewing other champions to give you the tools you need for becoming a true champion in your own life. And now, your host, Kelly Palace. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Champions Mojo Podcast. Well, it's December, and that time of year where we are often prompted to look back on the last 12 months and reflect on how the year went. Was it good? Was it bad? Was it somewhere in between? Or like I have heard at least one person proclaim recently, it's already December? Where has the year gone? I kind of feel like that. Um, Today, we hope to discuss five questions or techniques which will empower you to reflect, do some self-discovery, and put you on the right track to living your dreams in the next 12 months. Maria, this is a very powerful topic to me and one that I take seriously every December. I can't wait to talk with you about it. Hello, my dear friend. Hi, Kelly. Yeah, this is a topic that's near and dear to both of us. As I know, we're both traditional New Year's resolution makers, but this topic is the pre-work for setting goals, and I really need it. This is why we wanted to cover it before we went into the new year, because it's difficult to know where you're going without doing some inventory of where you've been. This past year, I've seen a ton of changes in my life, and I know you've seen some too, so the timing is great for us to put our research for this show into action. Let's do it, no matter how hard it is. Exactly, Maria. I I know right off the bat, when I hear the words reflection and self-discovery, I get a little bit nervous. For me, it is never easy to sit quietly and reflect on what's really going on in my life, but there is a way to do it. And there, you and I have come up with our own five key questions. We kind of looked at a ton of books and research and talks and things out there. And um, we really, we did a lot of pre-work on this, on this show. And we came up with five questions that we think, if you sit down, we want this to be super simple. It is getting to be around the holidays. Um, five questions you can ask yourself and how you would go about doing that to get a little bit more reflective on your year to set you up for an awesome year coming up. So uh, the first thing that that I think is important to do is to set aside 30 to 60 minutes, complete uninter- uninterrupted silence. Silence is key. Um, this is an, a time you really want to listen to your inner voice, your inner feelings. Uh, sit quietly and think get a notepad and write everything that comes to your mind. And that very first question to ask yourself in reflecting on the last year, when you think of that year, how do you feel? And we're talking about feelings, emotions. What comes up when you look back on that year? Sadness, joy, pride, exhaustion, boredom, disappointment, frustration, surprise, happiness, or like my first reflective hour produced for me, the feelings that came up for me when I look back on the last 12 months are awakened. For some reason this year, I realized that I was finally living again. I had kind of been sleepwalking the couple of years before that, and I I was just filled constantly filled with anxiety and stress. And, you know, when I, when I did this reflection, I just thought I, I, when I think when I'm in the middle of turmoil, like we often can be, I'm not, I'm not aware of how much turmoil I'm in. And I think that's probably a good self-preservation method, but looking 
in the last three years, we, you know, we built a dr our dream home on the ocean. It put our heart and souls into it. It was hit by two hurricanes. Two weeks after the hurricane hit the first one where, you know, we had the $250,000 worth of damage and we couldn't live there while all the repairs were being done. Um, I got diagnosed with breast cancer. Then I went through breast cancer, you know, diagnosis, surgery, recovery, um, and then slide right into my mom getting Alzheimer's where we went and lived, you know, in Virginia with my mom and dad and in their high 80s. And mom was really starting to be very out of it and then watching her decline. And then and then she passed away. And so it was just a really tough time that I, I couldn't have. I think if somebody had told me I was going to be going through that, I would have said, oh, I, I can't go through that. But mm -hmm. um, you had to run to the beach somehow. Yeah, I just did it. <laughs> and um, and now I feel like I can breathe again. Mm -hmm. It's it's like the weirdest thing I can breathe where I couldn't breathe for two years. Mm -hmm. So that you know, that really came up for me. And, and another emotion, I don't know if it's an emotion, but it certainly is a feeling. I just feel resilient. Mm. I feel like, gosh, you know, I, I'm resilient and I'm awakened. So that's a good place to start my goals. Yeah, that's amazing. And, you know, I was there for some of that. And I saw that 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 was an incredibly difficult time for the whole family. Your mom was an amazing personality in our family. And um, she had a lot, she took up a lot of space and um, to see her get sick and then die, you know, was it was just amazing, uh, amazingly difficult in, in many ways. Um, and I thought you did, you and the rest of your family were, you know, handled it beautifully, but it was difficult and, and your breast cancer was difficult. It was all very hard and, and yeah, and you managed it. You, you got through, you just did the next right thing. I remember when you were cleaning out your mom's and dad's house, just thinking, how is she doing this? Just, you know, just, you just whipped through it. You got it done. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you should feel good about having made it through that. So Maria, I, I, I know my life has has been difficult, but yours this past year. Tell me what your feelings are when you reflect on that number one question. Yeah, I, I, it, it, this was a big, big year for us. Um, we moved far, far away from the home that we've known for the last twenty two years. We moved from North Carolina up to the Boston area. It was, <laughs> it was an amazingly busy and, and tough year. Um, and I think, you know, when I reflect on my feelings, I feel kind of amazed, similar to you, that we ever got out of there. I mean, I just, it was, it, it was a difficult place for me to live for the last probably five to 10 years that we lived there. I was lonely and it was, it was, a, it was a, just a difficult place to live. And, um, and I wanted to be closer to my kids who lived up in New England. And so I can't believe that everything came together and we were able to do that. On the other hand, you know, when you've lived in a place for a long time and, you know, we're in our 50s, we had all of our stuff, <laughs> all of our kids' stuff. It was just, you know, really hard. So I guess when I looked, my feeling is it's kind of, kind of relief and amazement that we got out of there and also a little bit of sadness because my parents are still back there. So there's... Yeah. So, you know, I, I guess, I guess I'm just like, woo. <laughs> and, you know, I feel like I've run a long, hard race and, um, and now I'm, I'm thinking, okay, you know, what's, what's the next, what's the next thing? I love it. I love it. So the, the second question that Kelly and I put together is where have I been and what have I been doing? And this was, this is a really good exercise because as I was doing this exercise, I went through my calendar and I'd highly recommend this. Go through your calendar and month by month, write everything that you did, where you've been, what you've been doing, what, you know, what big things happened. Um, and when I did this, <laughs> I was amazed that I have traveled, left my home 19 separate times in the last 12 calendar months. It'll be 20 by the end of December. So I have, that just kind of blew me away that I've, how much I've traveled. A lot of it was related to the move. Uh, and my husband had a sort of a break between jobs. And so we did some travel there, but, it, um, so 
you know, I, I was like, wow, you know, this is, this is, you know, amazing. And then I also looked at the, the you know, the people I saw and the things that I did. Um, so having, so looking back at, at your calendar is, is just a great way to, you know, to, to reflect again, because we forget, like we, if you're a high performer, you tend to just look forward and you just go, 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 go. And you forget to look back and say, I did that. I did that. I did that for better or for worse. Some of the things you did, you might not be proud of. Some of the things you did, you might be very proud of. So I think that that's a really important question. You can ask yourself, where have I been? What have I been doing? Kelly, can you? Oh, Maria, I know. Mark and I, we keep an eye on you. We we know when you're traveling and, you know, it's amazing. Like, we're always like, I'm like, Maria's in Kiev. Maria's here. Maria's there. <laughs> Mark's. And we're just like, we're exhausted just watching your travel schedule. So I think, I think that's a great one. Get out your calendar and look at it. And another, another thing, like, you know, AI now, artificial intelligence, Google timeline. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you've ever used Google timeline, but Mark and I were having a, we were having a, well, not a, an argument, but a, a disagreement about, <laughs> you a never disagreement have to disagree about, now. Google knows. Yeah, about how much I had been traveling with Champions Mojo to do right. the podcast, to right. go to places to interview. And I'm like, no, I don't think I, I don't think I've been traveling that much. He goes, pull up your Google timeline. Pull it up. <laughs> so, um, so we did. And there were quite a few little uh, road trips, I should yeah. say, that yeah. were on my Google timeline that I, that weren't even like in my calendar. I just, you know, some people keep a really, a really tight calendar, but it was cool to watch. So definitely getting out your calendar and, and looking at that. And I, I think the Google timeline is a cool way to see it. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, where have I been and what have I been doing? I think for me, this podcast has been such an amazing, an amazing experience. And I am just loving, I have, where have I been? What have I been doing? I have been, we are on show number 42. So yeah. for the last 42 weeks, I've been doing podcasting and interviewing champions and talking with you champion sister. And it, it's just, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. So traveling to do podcasting, podcasting. And then of course, living in three locations where we winter in Florida, summer in North Carolina, and visit my dad for at least six weeks in the fall and the spring. So traveling with that. So I feel a little, um, where have I been and what have I been doing? I, I, I would like to have a little more of a home base. I'm traveling a lot myself and then mm -hmm. small trips to do interviews. Mm -hmm. That's where I've been and what I've been doing. And yeah, that's, that's good. And so that, that the surprise for you was that you've traveled more than you thought. Way more, way more. That mm -hmm. is that, that is a reflection where, you know, I think you can get a lot of value out of that because, because I, I think I could be more prepared. I think mm -hmm. a lot of my travel is just, Hey, I'm going to the University of Georgia this week and mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to Jack Bowerly. Mm -hmm. Boom. You know, mm -hmm. just it's not it's not a or something will come up. We'll meet somebody at a swim meet and then they'll say, hey, can you come and do an interview? And then it just happens. So it's more um, spontaneous, you know, more spontaneous mm -hmm. than I think I would like it to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what okay. I what I like about that for you, Kelly, and I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I love that you, it seems to me this past year, you have been more open to new places, new things, new, you know, I, I, I think of you as liking the comforts of home around you. And, and, and I'm amazed, you know, whereas I don't care. I mean, I'll go anywhere, stay anywhere, sleep anywhere. <laughs> I'm amazed at your just, I feel like you're just more open. Uh, this year, and maybe your travel calendar reflects that you're just more open to whatever good adventure the world has to serve up. Yeah, I think a lot of that comes with that being able to breathe, mm. you know, when one is under stress, or they're caring, caregiving is is hard when they're, when they're doing hard things, I don't think we're open to things. I think we want to control our environment, like, okay, I've got to deal with this, and I've got to deal with that, and I've got to deal with this. The last thing I need to deal with are bed bugs. You know, <laughs> so I mean, part of the reason that you'll that I'm not as <laughs> I guess an open as a traveler is because the you know everybody knows the the problems that I've had with my skin um, and itching, and you know, starting with eczema and then turning into red skin syndrome and and healing from that, which. You know, if I can keep my skin healthy, that is the one thing I am going to maintain. And when you told me 
you do travel and stay mostly anywhere that you got yeah. bed bugs once. That was it for me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm ever. I've actually had bed bugs again. twice, both in Ohio. Oh my gosh, stay away from Ohio. <laughs> uh, so right there, but but I still, I but I'm still open, you know. I and I think part of it again is looking back and saying, you know what, I'm resilient. Mm-hmm. If I went through breast cancer, I can go through bed bugs. Yes. If I went through taking care of mom, I can go through bed bugs. Yes. If I went through having our house get destroyed in a hurricane, I, you know, and I think that's the positive that we talk about that we all have those things everybody out there our listeners you guys are going through things that are probably worse than all the things that we're talking about and you can do it yeah so i think don't yeah look back look back yeah look back for the good and the bad i mean just like so in i am still so inspired from last week's interview with cody miller Mm. what he went through and made the olympic team right you know his his dad is homeless and dies on the street six months before he makes the Olympic team. Mm -hmm. And the guy, you know, I mean, so we all carry a big weight. And I think we're just so much tougher than we think we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're going to do question, question three. Yes. So the third question that we want to ask ourselves when we are heading, looking back on the year is, what activities or things really gave me the most joy and satisfaction? And I'm going to answer this one quickly, and I don't think anybody's going to be surprised. This podcast <laughs> is so, so joyful for mm-hmm. me. I just, it's like, like, Maria, you and I, we we joke. We're like, oh, my gosh, we get to do a podcast where we talk with each other, which we love to do and mm-hmm. talk about high performance and how to be better. And it's just every time... I'm inspired by every single person we talk with. Yeah. I'm inspired by you. And that just, it's just brought me so much joy this year. I can't even, I can't even put it into words. Yeah. And, and you had been talking about it for a, a little while, at least. I remember when your mom was sick, we were talking about it some. And it's, it it's, you know, having an idea, lots of people have ideas, but, but getting all the way to, to actually doing it. And we, when, when, when did we do our first one? Was it in March? March. Yeah. March of this year. I mean, year. That, I, I'm, I mean, I think, you know, who hasn't thought about it? Oh, I'll do a podcast. I'll do, you know, I'll write a book or whatever. But then you, you made it happen. And um, yeah, you should, you should get satisfaction. And it is incredible for us. We've always talked about how we've always tried to schedule regular phone calls and then life got in the way. And then you created this podcast and invited me to be part of it. And like we said, this is like this, we manifested exactly the kind of conversations we wanted to have. And we're doing it once a week, sometimes more frequently. So this is what we've always wanted for our relationship. And the podcast has made it happen. So that's really great. It is. Yeah. So Maria, what, what about you? What yeah. activities or things yeah. gave you the most joy and satisfaction yes. this year? The, the podcast has been incredible. And it's a reflection of one of my bigger values, which is I love spending time with people I love. And so one of the things that has given me the most joy and satisfaction is being right next door to my son, daughter-in-law and three grandchildren and right down the road from my daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter. Um, just the, just, I cannot tell you how my chest opens up and my heart just goes wide when I walk out the door and my little granddaughter and grandson yell, Mia, Mia. Mia, Mia. (laughs) And then, you know, I walk over there, even if I'm busy and I'm late and I'm supposed to be going somewhere, I walk over there and, you know, they're telling me their stories and uh, I just love that. And I've loved being close to my kids um, too. I've loved spending this regular time with you. You know, I, I, I guess the activities that, that are giving me the most joy are, you know, are, are being with, with people I love and also s- sort of maybe supporting, supporting them as well. One of the reasons we moved to New England was so that we could be there to know our grandchildren and also to, to support the parents. And I've loved, I've loved doing that. So that's been great. And that's, you know, that really happened starting in, in July so that's sort of new. When I was living in North Carolina, you know, I was able to, and still do, try to support, you know, my parents. And I love, 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 love my parents. But so it sort of switched over. But yeah. And the other thing, this is kind of, you know, I would have to put this as a minor thing, but I love 
and we're going to talk about this more next week, but I love being able to go through everything I owned and really pare down and feel a sense of organization and minimalism. So that's been, that's given me some satisfaction this year, which is kind of unexpected, I guess. Yes, that is really cool. Moving from your big, huge house in North Carolina to a rather smaller <laughs> yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay. So our fourth question is, you know, what obstacles did I overcome? Um, and, and what did I learn um, from those obstacles? Um, this is, this is a good one. It's, it's kind of a hard one for me. I tend to just kind of move through and not look back again and reflect on, on things. But I think that for me, it was a huge obstacle to leave North Carolina and come to New England. I, I wanted to be out of North Carolina for, for a while, as I mentioned. And, um, but actually moving myself, my business, and my nonprofit, uh, getting a new bank account. That was a much bigger oh, obstacle. Oh, gosh. Here we, go. Here we go with the bank again. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, I, my, my finances are, are probably because I do them wrong. They're, they're so complicated. I, I actually got a new bank, and that was, I mean, that was huge. It was huge. I got it. We have new lawyers. <laughs> you know, we, and so, I mean, I look back, and I, I mean, I, I, I can't believe that we actually moved. I, I'm, I'm. So I think it was, it was a big deal. I remember when I was, we were thinking about it at the beginning of 2019. Actually, towards the end of 2018, we knew we were probably going to be leaving. I thought, how are we ever going to do this? And we've done it. We've done it. So what did I learn? Well, I learned that you know, everything big, you just have to. And this is something I've already known, but I had to remind myself, it's just one little thing at a time. Like, for instance, and I keep coming back to this changing banks thing. It's like I had to first I had to figure out, you know, what bank I was going to move to. And then, you know, I had to do things just one thing at a time. So you had every day, you know, we talk about swallowing frogs. There's an expression, you know, every day you get up and you swallow the frog first. You do the most unpleasant thing first. So for the last six months, I've been making calls and doing banking related frog swallowing. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, so I guess I learned that no matter how hard it, you know, and big it seems, you know, you just got to do the, the next, the next thing, swallow the frog and move on. Yeah. I love the do the next thing. It just really is great. And yeah, th this has been a huge year of transition for you and, and Jim, your husband, Jim's yes, taking on a new job up there and, yes. then, and having him, you know, having to help him transition because that was a big transition for him yes. to go from being a doctor in North Carolina to getting his license in Massachusetts. Yes. And, you know, it was, it I'm so impressed you, so. with him because yeah, he's 56 years old. I mean, it's not easy to go from being the, the chief of your practice in one place and then being the low man on the totem pole in another place and having to learn all new systems. And, and, uh, you know, he, you know, of course, Jim is brilliant. We, <laughs> yes, but he, he is. yeah, he, he is. has amazed me, and it hasn't been easy. It has been. I mean, we can. We're not going to Pollyanna it. The the transition has been hard in many many ways. Um, and but Jim has has done it beautifully. And you know, you just keep you just keep moving forward. I love it. I love it. What about you? What are your obstacles? Uh, my, I think the main obstacle that I always run up against in my life is anxiety when I'm when I'm just out of balance or overtaxed or you know taking on too much and I, I think the big obstacle that I really overcame was the you know just processing the grief of my mom mm -hmm. I mean you know even though it's been a year now I still I didn't I don't think I had gave myself the proper time to process it mm -hmm. so I think my big obstacle this year about about when we started the podcast, January and February were kind of a tough time about a year ago. I just, I was having a ton of anxiety mm -hmm. and feeling really like things had come to an end. Mom had passed. We'd sold their house. We had relocated out of our big house on the ocean. Now we had a nice, you know, a little place, very easy to manage in Florida and settled in and, mm -hmm. you know, just like, like, okay what's next? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they say causes anxiety is in, uh, the uncertainty causes anxiety. Just 
what's next? What's out there? So I was just having some debilitating anxiety in January and February. And How did that manifest itself, Kelly? Um, it's just, you know, if anybody knows, if anybody who suffers with anxiety, it's just, it's just this terrible feeling of doom, of like just this kind of a, a, a feeling of dread. It's a feeling of dread constantly something is going to go wrong. And I, and I think that's also when, you know, this shoe drops, that shoe drops, this shoe's like, okay, what's next? And instead of staying in that terrible mindset of like the glass is half empty, I, I went on massive, you know, research of doing just devouring audiobooks, devouring TED Talks, devouring, you know, shows, you know, impact theory. I will say Tom Bilyeu and Joe Dispenza and Brendan Bouchard, um, all of these people that are out there, you know, all, you know, Tony Robbins and Jim Rohn and uh, like millions of Mel Robbins, just, just over and over, like listening to the best minds and the thought leaders on how to just yank yourself up out of a bad place. And, and, and also, you know, following that, Hey, our fellow, fellow, you know, champions out there, Michael Phelps and Allison Schmidt. And now here we hear Cody Miller and, I didn't really feel depressed, but boy, I felt anxious, just not comfortable in my own skin. I couldn't sit still because I would have thoughts of, you know, I, I think I manifest a little bit in hypochondria, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that comes from having breast cancer. So, you know, I don't want to go into the details, but mm -hmm. I had some, some questionable mammograms after my breast cancer. So now I'm like, okay is this breast cancer again? Oh mm -hmm. my, you know, and I even called you once during the summer before that. And I'm like, Maria, I have this lump on my throat. I'm pretty sure this is cancer. You know, it's <laughs> like, I just, I know that I got fixated on my health, which again, doing research, I learned that when someone has an illness that they recover from, that it's super common to have anxiety. In fact, the guy that won Survivor, and I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, Ethan, Ethan, he came out and said after he recovered from cancer, he, you know, he won Survivor, the show, the CBS show, which is one of my favorites. I am a Survivor fan. Would love to get Elizabeth Beisel on the show because she's a swimmer. And oh my gosh, yeah, that's she's she's one of my dream interviews because of the combo of swimming and um, Survivor. But anyway, Ethan Zahn won, I think his last name is Zahn, I may be saying that wrong, but he's a cutie, curly, black hair, just, he was one of the, one of my favorite winners of Survivor. He got cancer, and then when he came, after he got cancer, he was debilitated with anxiety. And he, so looking at people who'd overcome that, he actually um, said that CBD oil helped him a lot. So I started taking CBD oil, which you know, really, since we st started the podcast, my anxiety has been so out of the picture. I mean, it's just, you know, maybe a little bit here or there, but truly just, I don't know whether it's the combination of just really being focused positively on, you know, seeing a vision of the future, as Joe um, Dispenza says, you know, have a positive vision of the future. So instead of thinking, oh my gosh, woe is me, is this cancer? Think about somebody else. Think about what you're doing, bringing something. So I'm really going off topic, or maybe I'm going roundabout here, but I think my manifesting was hypochondria based kind of on my breast cancer and also watching my mom get Alzheimer's. And then caregivers of Alzheimer's patients, the number one thing. If I lose my car keys, oh my gosh, I have Alzheimer's. Because, you know, if your mom died of Alzheimer's, you think, hey, I'm going to, I may get Alzheimer's. But so the obstacle was getting out of that well, deep well of January and February of anxiety. And that was my obstacle. And I, the podcast was a huge part of it. And, and also just connecting to people out there that could help resources that could help me and people that had been through it. And what did I learn is that you've got to, you've got to move. You got to take action. You got to get out of your comfort zone and you've got to go. Hmm. That's good. I know that the anxiety, I think in, in my family, it's more depression. You know, we tend to run, but I agree with you. They're kind of, they're, they're of, they're two parts of the same 
piece. But but yeah, I've seen anxiety be debilitating in members of my family. And um, yeah, it's just interesting to hear how you, you know, you just made yourself move <laughs> and get, because that dread that you described, I've not experienced that. But but I but I've seen it. I've seen it in, in other members of the family, and I, it must be just awful. Yeah, and I I I'm sandwiched between two of the people that I love the most and that love me the most. Mark, my husband, does not get it. He's like, I don't. What does it feel like? What does it feel like? like? It just feels like somebody's scratching on your brain, and it's just horrible. It's like a terrible feeling. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. You guys right. are lucky you don't have right. it. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so. Obstacles, they, you know, think about those, what the last year, what obstacles you overcame. Um, yeah. So, and then the, the final question, which Maria, I'm going to let you answer first since I've okay. been doing all the talking. What are areas where you, you can improve and um, which area might have the most impact? Yeah, that's, that's great. And that's probably the most important question, right? Because... We always want to be growing and improving. Um, and you have to ask yourself those hard questions. And, you know, question four, the, the, the obstacles you overcame, that's the little mound you stand on <laughs> to, look <Yes>. for, <laughs> to look for areas where, where you can improve. And so this is, you know, I guess we all have our, our sort of deep ingrained issues. And for me, I love being productive. I love being busy. I, I to and it's to a fault. And I'm I'm aware that this is an area where I can improve. When I look at my calendar and see that I have traveled 19 times, I've gotten in a car and on an airplane to leave my home 19 times this year. The question that I have to ask myself is, why? You know, what am I doing? What am I running from? So I I would see a really important area that I can improve is to stop and be more reflective. I hate reflection. When you started talking about that at the beginning of the interviews, like I, I'm just like, I like it in theory, but to stop and, and to examine my, my conscience, to examine, you know, what I've done to what, you know, to think about things I'm, I'm afraid. I, you know, I don't know why I'm afraid, but, you know, I, I guess I get that anxiety a little bit addressed. Like, you know, I don't want to stop and, and, um, and think about things too much. I don't want to be reflective. I have a hard time being reflective. And I think that's an obstacle. That's an area where I can, I, if I can improve, I will live a better, more, more thoughtful, probably more joyful life. So, and I think that would have a huge impact if I would just spend more time reflecting on, you know, the whirlwind of my life and spend less time writing lists and crossing things off lists. <laughs> so go deeper, Maria. I want, I want, I want to, I want to, I want to go deeper. And I want to, I guess, maybe examine in that time that I'm going deeper, like, why is that hard for me? Because I know when I do take the time to reflect, when I take the time to pray, when I take the quiet time, that I am more joyful and less stressed, and and I and I live and I remind myself of what my values are. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that as an area for 2020 that I want to improve in, and I think that will have a, a great impact on my life going forward. I'm just going to say, okay, reflect. Don't, don't be so busy. Don't be so, I, I, I mentioned before, I have a friend who laughs at me because she'll say, did you have a good day? And I'll say, well, yeah, it was very productive or no, I didn't get anything done. And she'll say, well, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Which is a great point. Productivity isn't, you know, we, we don't, you know, it's not the point of life. And, um, so that's an area where I think I can improve. Maria, that's powerful. And I think really valuable. And and reflection is painful for all of us. I think it's just a commonality to, to quiet ourselves is so aberrant in this society, especially, you know, we talk about digital distraction. I think it's even harder. And then, and then it becomes this uncomfortable space because I often joke with my husband, if, if, 
he doesn't have a set of headphones listening to an audiobook. I'm like, honey, do you ever just have some quiet time? But yeah, that we don't get, we, it, it's a little scary because we're not used to it. So I love that you're going to do that. I'd love to help you with that any way that I can. And you know what I, I think will help all of us is next week's show. No, next week is Natalie Coughlin, which is very exciting. She's She's got some really great fabulous. stuff for us. But our next she's show, fabulous. we're going to talk about simplifying your life. And that is going to be really great for for this particular question for you, because I think right. you're going to have to say no to some things to to make make space for reflection. make space for reflection and maybe travel ten times instead of twenty times next year if that's what you want. <laughs> but yeah. um, so that'll be or, or maybe just fifteen. Yeah, maybe just fifteen <laughs> or maybe twenty five if it really ends up being <laughs> you know what what brings you joy. So um, okay, so now my turn to answer what areas right. that I can improve on and uh, which would have the most impact. And no doubt this is, this is a, it's tied in to exactly what you're saying, Maria. I really need to improve on consistent meditation. It's just, it is that quiet. It's that reflective time. It sounds like you and I have almost the same answer to this. I'm not, yeah. um, I, I don't feel like this, the reasons that I want to do it are different than yours, but it's mm -hmm. almost the same action. And that is... Um, the answer is the same. That's interesting. Doing mm -hmm. the meditation. Doing meditation consistently is an area that I have to improve on. And when I do it, I sleep better. My anxiety is lower. I'm more productive. I'm happier. All that. So that would be the area that would impact my life the most would be meditation. So... Let's review the five questions that, and these will be in the show notes, but if you're playing along, uh, the first question is, how do you feel about the last 12 months? The second question is, where have you been and what have you been doing? Number three, what activities or things gave you the most joy and satisfaction? Number four, what obstacles did you overcome and what did you learn? And number five, what areas can you improve in and which would have the most impact? So we hope that these were five easy questions questions you could answer, reflect on them, and that as we move into the next year, the next 12 months, that these can help you set up some goals, which will be a show that we will definitely do in the future. What do you think, Maria? Yeah, I'm excited about that. I, um, I think it's hard to find time in this busy season to be reflective. But I would encourage everyone to, I mean, we're not talking about a lot of time, but you will, you will have a better 2020 if you know what happened in 2019. <laughs> That's kind of what I learned just doing the exercise myself. So take time out to spend 30 minutes or an hour thinking about, thinking through these questions. And I think you'll have a better place to stand on moving forward. Definitely. Well, I love it and I love you and I'm looking forward to another great, 12 months ahead of this podcast yes. and our experience. And I thank everybody for being with us today and yes, joining yes. us. Yes. I love you too, Kelly. All right. Just, just delighted to be on this journey with Me you. Me too. We will see you on the next show. All right. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you too. Bye-bye. This week's quote of the week comes from Margaret Wheatley. Without reflection, we go blindly on our way, creating more unintended consequences and failing to achieve anything useful. We are so grateful that you spent this time with us today, and we hope that you heard something that inspired, motivated, and educated you. Please see below for our copy of the show notes for any links or important information referenced here. Signing off for myself and champion co-host Kelly Palace, we hope you'll join us again soon, and we know you can be a champion. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Champions Mojo podcast, designed to make you feel inspired, motivated, and educated. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Also, visit championsmojo.com to learn more.